Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And I remember yesterday I was sharing some very, very important things to you. You know, I didn't even know I was going to talk about it. I actually prayed at the beginning. I said, let, let the Holy Spirit guide us to, to get, give us ultra. And then he just opened it up. <laughs> it is God. I've been trying to talk about this for over a week ago. But, but it wouldn't just come. So just like I was telling you yesterday, be careful about your life. Make sure the Holy Spirit have not withdrawn from guiding you. Because Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. An angel will not guide you into all truth. No. An angel has your assignment before him. And he leads you according to the assignment. You know, I told you something last week. I told you, look, the children of Israel, they were walking with the angel. A journey that was supposed to be 40 days. They spent 40 years. The angel couldn't be faster. Why? Because, you see, before they enter into a new level, they have to be fit. Now, that fitting, that's... that's, that's um, construction for them to be fit to enter is done by the Holy Spirit. The testing for the new level is given by, the, by, by, by God himself. If you don't qualify for the next level of your life, there is nothing the angel can do. He will just keep going around with you and doing all the exercise and doing all the exercise until you are qualified. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. And then you see the difference between the work of the Holy Spirit and then the angels walking. You know, I, I, I have to tell you this. Sometimes we, we, know, we, we tell you, look, whatever you want in life has already been given to you. And that's the truth. You see, God has finished all the work he needs to do. The Bible says when he finished, he rested. You see, in Genesis chapter 2, when the Bible says he rested, he truly rested. Now, so what do we see? We see his spirit carrying out every work that he has spoken and written. That's why Jesus said we should pray that prayer. What we call the Lord's Prayer says, The will of God be done on earth as it is written in heaven. That's how Jesus actually said it. Say, how do I know? The Holy Spirit. I was praying that prayer one time and, and then, you know, no, no, I wasn't praying. I was studying or uh, something. And then the Holy Spirit just brought me to that scripture. And he said, do you, do you, this is exactly what Jesus said. The will of God be done on earth as it is written in heaven. There are books in heaven, brothers and sisters. That's why the book of Revelation says books will be opened. Books will be opened. What books will be opened? Think it's the book of your sins? No. No. You know, people have this mentality that angels are writing our iniquities. No, no angel has time to be writing your iniquities. The books are the books that have already been written concerning you waiting to, for you to rise up and fulfill the things that have been written. There is no one of you that it has been written that you'll be poor all your life. No one. There are dimensions that God has written concerning you. Great things because he says, my thoughts concerning you, they are good and not evil. Now, you can relate with the Holy Spirit so well. But you know, you know something about relating with the Holy Spirit? You will never go wrong fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. But you may go wrong just following an angel. So what do you mean by that? Yeah. Like I told you yesterday, an angel doesn't bother how you live your life. It's none of their business. It's none of their business. You can go out of, you can be keeping malice for many years. 
and you still and, and you're a pastor, you're a preacher, and you'll still be seeing results in your ministry. It's possible. So why? Because of the angels. Now, there are certain things we do that we draw angels from walking in our lives. And I'm going to be sharing those things with you. And also there are certain things we do that enhances the activities of angels in our lives. To activate or to, to enhance activities of angels, one thing you have to learn, you see Jesus said in John chapter 4, talking to that woman by the well, he said God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Now, when, when we worship God in spirit and in truth, what does that mean? What does it mean to worship God in spirit? It means to flow with the Holy Spirit. I want you to get this now. You allow the Holy Spirit guide you in your worship. Now, what does that mean? You are praying. You allow the Holy Spirit guide you in your prayers. And that's why we say it is important you speak in tongues. So when we speak in tongues, it is the Holy Spirit that is giving the utterance. He's giving us what to say. Now, how, how else do you want to be sure you're praying now by the Spirit? See? So that's why we encourage people to speak in other tongues. Now, beyond speaking in tongues, there are times we pray. And you want to pray for some. That's why I've always said this. I said whenever you go on your knees to pray concerning any issue, your first prayer point should be, Lord, how should I pray about this matter? See, when you, when you ask that kind of a question, you are inviting the Holy Spirit to help you pray. He can give you utterance in your understanding. He can tell you pray like this. Use these words. Or he gives you a scripture. Pray according to the scripture. See? Now, when, you, when that happens in your life, that is praying in the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, the same thing with singing. The same thing with worshiping. When you worship God in the spirit, you are depending on the Holy Spirit to give you utterance in your worship. Now, when you begin to do things like this, when, when you are always accurate in prayer, when you are always accurate in worship, you know what I mean, worship now, singing, you know, and things like that, you will realize that angelic activities around you become strong. You know why? You are speaking clear words that the angels recognize. See, this is how it works. When we pray in the Spirit, when we worship in the Spirit, you are saying exactly what has been written for that hour concerning your life. Now, when you do that, what are you doing? It's like the angels holding the script and realizing, oh, oh, I know the part we are in now. We're in this part. We're in this part. We're in this part. Guess what's going to happen to you? Things are going to be made easy for you. Oh, I, I pray you, I pray you catch this understanding. <laughs> Listen, man. Ah, life can be easy. I don't know the challenge that you're going through or facing today. You can come out of it without a scratch. You can come out of it as easily as possible. How? By the Holy Spirit. Every angel you need is all around you. And guess what? The answer to that situation is even around you. It's not far away from you. So what you just need is to connect with the Spirit of God who will guide you into the truth of the hour starting from your prayer point. And then when you pray like that, then what happens? You activate every angel that is connected to that thing. Just like I was sharing with you last week. Some area was on lockdown. The Syrian army, they were there. All the food they ever needed. I mean, the Syrian army, it was all there. But according to the wisdom of God, that is the food that God wanted to transfer to Samaria. See? So when, when I hear people say, uh, don't believe in that thing, they say wealth transfer. They don't even understand what they are talking about. Now, yes, there is not like one day God's going to announce to everybody, today is going to be well transferred. But it's already taking place. 
is already taking place. Those who walk by the Spirit of God are seeing these things happen in their lives. But you see, because you don't understand. For example, like when the scriptures talk about a hundredfold, you know, people think, okay, I want to reap a hundredfold, so if I sow one, I'm going to reap one hundred. Now, that's, that's, that's not what the Bible says. You know, sometimes lack of understanding. A hundredfold doesn't mean a hundred times. A hundredfold, let me explain it in mathematical terms, is simply a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, what do you mean a hundred percent? Now, if I sow, let me, let me use it, let me quantify with sowing and reaping. If I sow a car, for example, and I'm believing God for a hundredfold return, do you know what that means? When I sow this car, I release my faith that from henceforth, I will never be without a car. Now, you may travel to another nation. The moment you land there, you're meeting someone over and say, Hey, hi, you know, I have a car I can give you to use while you're here. I said, Oh, really? Oh, I, I wouldn't mind that. Thank you. Oh, take it. You know, I've, I've filled up the tank. Anytime you need fuel, don't bother. Just go to, you know, like, really? Yeah. And then you're enjoying that. You don't know you're enjoying your hundredfold harvest. Yeah, that's, that's what a hundredfold means. It means concerning this matter, you have given it to the Lord a hundred percent and you have received from him a hundred percent. So concerning this issue, it is completely answered. Every angel knows it. So even if you receive a card today and it is stolen from you the next hour, fear not, another car will be given to you if that one doesn't come back immediately. That's what a hundredfold means. It means concerning this thing, there shall be no lack where this thing is concerned. That's what it means. And then you will now keep increasing, increasing according to your needs. Because when, when you grow to have a large family, now you need more than one car, it's going to come. You need two cars, it's going to come. You own an organization, you need more cars, they are just going to start coming like that. You don't understand why they are coming so easily. You know, someone just walks up to you and says, oh, I have this car I want to sell. I think I should sell it to you. And I, I need some money to do this business. Just give me any amount. I want you to have it. And you wonder what's going on. A hundredfold harvest is working. See? Because you won't get things normally like every other person. So, everything Samaria needed was already around them. But what were they waiting for? They were waiting for the man, Elisha, to speak the words that have been written in heaven. How is he going to speak those words? By the Spirit. See? See how it works now? So, when Elisha eventually spoke by the Spirit and said, Thus says the Lord. What happened? The angels activated those leopards. And they thought to themselves, they said, Come. What are we doing here? If we continue staying here, we will die because there is no food. If we go, if we go, go to Samaria, there is no food there, we will die. All right, so what do we do? The Syrian, the Syrian army, they have food with them. If we go there, that's what they said, let's go there. If they give us food, we leave. If they don't give us food and they kill us, we die. So in every point of, in every way you're going to look at this, and there is death somewhere. But the only place that has a probability of hope is with the Syrian army. And the Bible says they decided to go there. And guess what? As they started marching towards the place, by the time they got there, they saw the whole camp empty with all the food still intact. Every, their horses, their chariots, everything intact, but no man was there. Why? Because the Bible says, go and read this for yourself, First Corinthians, sorry, First Kings, Second Kings chapter 7. The Bible says God made the Syrian army to hear the footsteps of horses and chariots and a host. Now, wherever you see the word host used in scriptures, he's talking about the angelic host. So what do you think happened? While those lepers were going, angels began to storm the floor. They began to match. <laughs> see, listen, listen. The Bible says we are surrounded by innumerable, innumerable. Think about one. Imagine those, those soldiers were like maybe 1,000. Now, you think about 100,000 angels stamping the floor. 
marching on the floor. And they said, what? Guess what they said? They said, look, man, I think the, the king of Samaria have hired, gone to hire the Egyptians and the Hittites to come and fight us. And they all ran away. Now, what am I saying? Everything to bring them harvest was already there. All that was needed was that they speak a word that is written in heaven. And that's the same thing you need to do today. If you will connect with the Holy Spirit and speak the word that is connected to heaven, that miracle you are believing God for will come to you freely. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My time is up. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.